Greetings, dear travelers. This is Off the World, your companion in uncovering the enchanting narratives of nations journeying through one country at a time. Allow your compass to guide you eastward towards Jakarta, the lively heart of the world's largest archipelago, cradled amidst a sea of over 17,000 islands. Today we embark on a journey to the land of diverse cultures, mesmerizing landscapes, and a history that's as captivating as it is varied. Our voyage today brings us to Indonesia. Located in Southeast Asia and Oceania, Indonesia straddles the equator between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. We'll also delve into the symbols of this nation, like the majestic Javan Hawk Eagle, mythical bird that proudly represents Indonesia. From its ancient roots to its contemporary glory, the narrative of Indonesia is a soothing tale that we will explore together. The country's name, its flag, its landscape, its language diversity all hold fascinating stories that will unfold one at a time. So, get ready for a journey into Indonesian history, a tale as diverse and colorful as its islands. This nation is also home to the Sumatran tiger, Komodo dragons, and the majestic Javan hawk eagle. Yes, holds the answer to our weekly riddle. As we are introduction, here's a fascinating fact. Indonesia is projected to have a population of approximately 273 million people in 2024, making it the fourth most populous country in the world. Let's explore this vibrant nation. Before we delve into the origin of Indonesia, let's pause for a moment and marvel at the sheer size of this fascinating country. Indonesia is not just populous, it's also vast in its geographical spread. Spanning over 1.9 million square kilometers, it's the 14th largest country in the world by land area. To give you some context, if you were to place Indonesia over the map of Europe, it would stretch from Ireland in the west to the Ural Mountains in Russia to the east. That's right, the full breadth of Europe. The geographical distribution of the population across the islands is another intriguing aspect of Indonesia's size. The majority of the population is concentrated on the island of Java, which, although only constitutes about 7% of the total land area, houses more than half of the country's population. Just imagine, an archipelago of over 17,000 islands, each with its unique landscape and culture spread over a distance that could cover the entirety of Europe. The size of Indonesia is indeed a testament to its geographical diversity, which is as impressive as its cultural richness. As we explore the origin of Indonesia, remember this vastness, this diversity, for it plays a significant role in shaping the country's rich history and vibrant culture. The name Indonesia has a fascinating story behind it. This tale takes us back to the ancient Greeks, known for their love of exploration and knowledge. The word Indonesia itself is a concoction of two Greek words, Indos, meaning India, and Nesos, meaning islands. But you might be wondering why the reference to India in the name of a country that's geographically separate? Well, the answer lies in the early explorer's understanding of the world. Back in the day, the term India was used by the Greeks not just to refer to the subcontinent that we know as India today, but to a much larger region. This region encompassed the entire Eastern world known to the Greeks, which included the islands that make up modern-day Indonesia. So when the Europeans started exploring these far-flung corners of the earth, they brought with them the Greek terminology. They referred to these islands as Indian islands due to their location in what was then considered the Indies. As time passed, the name evolved. In the late 19th century, a British ethnologist by the name of James Richardson Logan used the term Indonesia to differentiate the Indian subcontinent from the Indian islands. This was a significant step as it identified Indonesia as a distinct region, separate from India. However, it was not until the early 20th century that Indonesia was adopted officially. A group of students in the Netherlands, all of Indonesian descent, used the term to express their nationalistic sentiments. They saw it as a way to unite the diverse islands and cultures under one name, one identity, Indonesia, and thus the country got its name, Indonesia, a land of Indian islands. A name that carries with it a story of exploration, identity, and unity. A name that today represents a vibrant nation known for its rich cultural diversity and breathtaking landscapes. Every flag tells a story, and Indonesia's is no exception. Unfurled in the sky, the Sangsaka Merah Puti, or the Great Red and White, is a symbol of the nation's unity and sovereignty. Alongside the flag, the Garuda, 
The national emblem is a representation of the Indonesian ethos. The majestic bird, a mythical creature in Hindu and Buddhist mythology, signifies strength, power and protection. It also carries the national motto, Bin Neka Tunggal Ika, meaning unity and diversity on a scroll clutched in its talons. The design of the flag is a study in simplicity, comprised of two equal horizontal bands of red on top and white below. Yet this straightforward layout carries a depth of meaning that resonates with the people of Indonesia. The red stands for courage, echoing the bravery of the Indonesian people who fought tirelessly for their independence. The white, on the other hand, represents purity and holiness, embodying the ideals of truth, justice and virtue. The Sangsaka Mera Puti, along with the Garuda, is more than just a symbol, it's a tangible representation of the nation's identity. The flag was first unfurled on on the 17th of August 1945, marking the nation's proclamation of independence. Since then, it's flown high and proud, a constant reminder of the country's journey and the ideals it strives for. However, the flag as we know it today wasn't always the same. It underwent a significant change in its design in 1950 when the country transitioned into a republic. The flag being hoisted up every morning in schools, offices and public institutions serves as a daily affirmation of the unity and sovereignty. The simplicity of the Indonesian flag belies the profound symbol of unity and sovereignty it stands for. It's a testament to the nation's journey, its struggles, victories and its unwavering spirit. And the Garuda, with its mighty wings spread wide, serves as a potent emblem of the country's strength and diversity. The Sangsaka Meraputi, in all its simplicity and depth, along with the Garuda, continues to be a beacon of hope, resilience and unity for the people of Indonesia. Indonesia, a country comprised of more than 17,000 islands, is a treasure trove of natural beauty and landmarks. A land of contrasts, it straddles the equator between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. This Southeast Asian nation, the world's largest archipelago, is a melange of diverse landscapes from lush tropical rainforests and vibrant coral reefs to volcanic mountains and sprawling rice terraces. Now let's take an imaginary jaunt around some of the country's most iconic landmarks. First stop, the majestic Borobudur Temple, the world's largest Buddhist temple nestled in central Java. This ancient marvel, dating back to the 8th and 9th centuries, is a testament to Indonesia's rich cultural heritage. It's a complex of intricate carvings, stupas and statues, all shrouded in the mystery of time. From Borobudur, we venture east to the island of Komodo, home to the world's largest lizard, the Komodo dragon. But Komodo Island isn't just about these fascinating creatures. It's also a treasure trove of natural beauty, with its rugged hills, savannas and pristine beaches. The pink beach with its blush-tinted sands is a sight to behold. Next we fly to Bali, the island of the gods. Bali is a paradise in every sense of the word, with its emerald rice terraces, ancient temples and azure waters. It's a melting pot of culture and nature where traditional Balinese arts coexist with the island's stunning natural beauty. The iconic Tana Lot Temple, perched on a rocky outcrop in the sea, is one of the most picture-perfect sights in Bali. But Indonesia is more than just its postcard-perfect landmarks. It's a country of diverse ecosystems, each with its unique flora and fauna. The lush rainforests of Borneo and Sumatra are the last bastions for endangered species, such as orangutans, Sumatran tigers and rhinos. The vibrant coral reefs of Raja Ampat are considered the heartbeat of the world's marine biodiversity. And let's not forget about the country's bustling cities. Jakarta, the capital, is a vibrant metropolis, a blend of modern skyscrapers, colonial architecture and traditional markets. It's a city that never sleeps, where the old and the new coexist. Indonesia's geographical diversity is truly awe-inspiring, a testament to the country's rich natural heritage. Each island, each city, each landmark tells a story, a slice of Indonesia's multi-layered history and culture. From the ancient temples of Java to the vibrant reefs of Raja Ampat, from the bustling streets of Jakarta to the tranquil beaches of Bali, Indonesia is a country that never ceases to enchant. It's no wonder that Indonesia is a bucket list destination for travelers worldwide. The beauty of Indonesia is not just in its landscapes, but also its languages. Indeed, the linguistic landscape of Indonesia is as diverse and vibrant as its physical terrain. The national language, Bahasa Indonesia, 
serves as the unifying tongue across the archipelago. A member of the Austronesian language family, it's a standardized form of Malay tweaked with a unique Indonesian flair. But the linguistic story of Indonesia does not stop there. Oh no, it is far richer and more complex. You see, beyond Bahasa, there are a staggering 700 local languages spoken throughout the islands. Yes, 700. These languages are not mere dialects of Bahasa, but distinct languages in their own right, each with its own unique vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. From the rhythmic tones of Javanese in Java to the melodic cadences of Balinese in Bali, from the vibrant Batak languages of Sumatra to the distinct Dayak languages of Borneo, Indonesia is a veritable linguistic smorgasbord. Each language is not just a means of communication, but a reflection of the unique culture and history of its speakers. Sadly, many of these languages are under threat as younger generations increasingly adopt Bahasa and English. But efforts are underway to preserve and revitalize these linguistic treasures. After all, each language is a unique window into the human experience, a unique song in the grand symphony of human culture. So whether you're navigating the bustling streets of Jakarta, trekking through the dense jungles of Sumatra, or soaking up the sun on the beaches of Bali, Remember that each place has its own unique language, its own unique voice, and each voice adds to the rich, vibrant tapestry that is Indonesia. Language in Indonesia is as diverse as its islands, reflecting the country's rich cultural mosaic. Now, let's delve into the intriguing history of Indonesia. Our journey begins in the mists of prehistory. The first humans arrived in Indonesia around one million years ago, a species known as Homo erectus, or Java man, these early were the forebearers of the modern Indonesian people, surviving and thriving in this tropical paradise for tens of thousands of years. Fast forward to around 2,000 years before Christ and we find ourselves in the Bronze Age. The Dongson culture, known for their distinctive bronze drums, had begun to take root. It was during this period that the first rice cultivation and metalworking began, two innovations that would shape the future of the region. As we move into the first century AD, we see the rise of the first major kingdoms in Indonesia. The powerful Srivijaya Maritime Empire emerged in Sumatra, while the Mataram Kingdom rose in central Java. These kingdoms were heavily influenced by the cultural and religious practices of India, adopting Hinduism and Buddhism. The 13th century brought a significant change to Indonesia with the arrival of Islam. The religion spread rapidly, mainly through trading contacts, and by the 16th century it had become the dominant faith in Java and Sumatra. Today, Indonesia is known for having the highest Muslim population in the world, with over 225 million people identifying as Muslims, which accounts for approximately 12.7% of the world's total Muslim population. The 16th century also marked the beginning of European colonial influence in Indonesia. The Portuguese were the first to arrive, seeking to monopolize the lucrative spice trade. They were soon followed by the Dutch, who established the Dutch East India Company and gradually took control of the archipelago. The period of Dutch colonial rule, which lasted from the 17th century until the mid-20th century, was marked by economic exploitation and political repression. However, it also introduced Western ideas such as nationalism and democracy, which would play a crucial role in Indonesia's future. The flames of Indonesian nationalism were kindled in the early 20th century, with figures like Sukarno and Mohammed Hatta leading the charge for independence. However, it wasn't until the Second World War, when Japan invaded Indonesia in 1942, that the path to independence became more certain. The Japanese, aiming to cultivate goodwill and leverage nationalist sentiment against the Dutch independence to Indonesia. While they didn't fulfill this promise, their occupation nonetheless displaced the Dutch and encouraged nationalist sentiment, providing an unexpected catalyst for the independence movement. The end of the war in 1945 saw Sukarno and Hatta declare Indonesia's independence. The Dutch initially attempted to reassert their control, resulting in a four-year conflict known as the Indonesian National Revolution. However, international pressure eventually forced the Dutch to recognize Indonesia's sovereignty in 1949. 
After gaining independence, Indonesia underwent tumultuous period of political and social change. Sukarno's guided democracy era in the 1960s was marked by increasing authoritarianism and economic turmoil. This culminated in a failed coup attempt in 1965, which led a violent anti-communist purge and the rise of General Suharto. New Order regime, which lasted from 1967 to 1998, brought stability but also widespread corruption and human rights abuses. The Asian financial crisis of 1997 triggered a wave of protests that led to Suharto's resignation in 1998. In the post-Suharto era, Indonesia has made strides towards democracy and economic reform. However, it has also faced challenges such as separatist movements in Aceh and Papua, religious conflicts and natural disasters. Despite these hurdles, Indonesia has shown remarkable resilience and a vibrant cultural spirit. From the ancient temples of Borobudur and Prambanan to the modern skyscrapers of Jakarta, from the traditional Wayang puppet theater to the contemporary pop music scene, Indonesia's history is a rich tapestry of diverse influences and dynamic change. Prominent figures have also emerged throughout history. Sukarno, the country's first president, and his successor, Suharto, are undoubtedly two of most influential. However, others like Radan Ajeng Kartini, an advocate for women's rights in the early 20th century, and B.J. Habibie, who steered the country towards democracy after Suharto's fall, have also left their mark. And that, my friends, is a brief overview of the rich tapestry that is Indonesia's history. From its ancient roots, let's now turn our attention to present-day Indonesia. In the heart of Southeast Asia, modern Indonesia is a bustling republic, governed by a democratic system. The nation's head of state and government is the president, a role currently filled by the charismatic and dynamic leader Joko Widodo, fondly known as Jokowi. His approach to leadership has been marked by a focus on infrastructure development and an emphasis on maritime prowess reflecting Indonesia's status as an archipelagic nation. Indonesia's government structure is an interesting blend of presidential and parliamentary systems, with the president acting as both the head of state and the head of government. The president, along with the vice president, is elected by popular vote and serves a five-year term. This democratic process is a testament to the resilience of the Indonesian people who have navigated their way through various forms of government throughout history. But modern Indonesia is not just about politics. It's a vibrant tapestry of cultures, traditions, and natural beauty. Today, it is famous for its stunning landscapes, from the pristine beaches of Bali to the dense tropical rainforests of Sumatra. It's a paradise for adventurers and nature lovers alike. The country is also renowned for its rich cultural heritage, with over 300 ethnic groups, each contributing to the country's unique cultural mosaic. This diversity is reflected in everything from its cuisine, which ranges from spicy rendang to sweet matabak, to its traditional arts and crafts, like the intricate batik textiles and the mesmerizing shadow puppet theater known as Wayang Kulit. Indonesia's economy is a force to be reckoned with. As one of the world's top 10 largest economies by purchasing power parity, it is a key player in the global stage. Its main economic sectors include manufacturing, services and agriculture, with palm oil, petroleum and natural gas being among its top exports. Indonesia, in its modern form, is a testament to the resilience and diversity of its people. From its dynamic political landscape to its rich cultural heritage and economic prowess, the country stands as a beacon of progress and potential in Southeast Asia. And so Indonesia continues to write its history, a fascinating blend of the old and the new. Before we wrap up our journey through Indonesia, let's delve into some fascinating lesser known tidbits about this sprawling archipelago that might surprise you. Indonesia is not just large in terms of its land area, but also in its time span. Did you know it stretches across three different time zones? Western Indonesian time, WIB, Central Indonesian time, Waita, and Eastern Indonesian time, WIT, are the three time zones that govern the daily rhythms of this vast nation. Now let's shift our gaze from time to nature. Indonesia is home to the Rafuja Arnoldi, the world's largest flower. This gigantic bloom can grow up to one meter in diameter, a sight to behold, but be warned, it's also known as the corpse flower for its strong odor of decaying flesh. Now, 
from the largest flour, let's move to spices. Indonesia is the world's largest producer of nutmeg, an aromatic spice native to the Spice Islands, now known as the Maluku Islands. Nutmeg has been coveted for centuries for its sweet, distinctive flavor and its purported medicinal properties. So next time you sprinkle nutmeg on your holiday eggnog, remember that it might have come from the lush tropical islands of Indonesia. These are just some of the many intriguing aspects of Indonesia that make it such a unique and diverse country. Until our next journey, this is Off The World, wishing you a world of knowledge and adventure. Well, that's our journey through the history of Indonesia. We've traversed time from the origins of its name to the vibrant tapestry of its present day. We've unfurled the significance of its flag, navigated its geographical terrain, and marveled at its linguistic diversity. We've walked through epochs, meeting famous characters and witnessing key events that have shaped this nation. We've even peeked into the present, understanding its current government and ruler. And who can forget the country's unique claims to fame? It's been quite the adventure, hasn't it? I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you for joining me on this weekly exploration. Your curiosity fuels these journeys and I'm delighted to have you along for the ride. Now, if you've enjoyed this historical deep dive as much as I have, why not subscribe for more and like the video? After all, who doesn't love a good history mystery? This is Off The World, signing off until our next exploration. Remember, if you've come this far, you might as well hit that subscribe button. Until next time, keep exploring.